BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to Genesis chapter, Bereshit chapter 4. Vamos a tornar a Genesis capítulo 4. This is uh, BGMC Triennial Prasha number 3, part B. Este es el BGMC eh, Parasha Trinial, parte 3. And B. Y B. If you have the uh, PowerPoint... Uh, it'll be, uh, we'll starting on slide number eight. Si tienes el PowerPoint, empezaremos en la, en la parte número ocho. But what we're going to do as we do these, uh, these parashas, we're going to read the chapter. Lo que vamos a hacer es, es leer el capítulo. So everybody, if you're reading in Spanish, please read the entire chapter. Si están leyendo en español, leanlo el capítulo completo. Because you have to look at the big picture. Porque tienes que ver al cuadro completo. To then be able to see the fine detail in the verses. Para que así puedas ver los detalles disminutos en, el, en los versículos. It's like looking at a blueprint. Es como mirar a un... a una... Drawing. A una, un dibujo. A un you plano. Get, you get the big picture and then the, the detail is in the little things that I'm going to give to Oscar later. <laughs> la, la, lo, ves la, el cuadro Y los detalles pequeños están dentro del cuadro. All right, so let's read Genesis chapter 4. Vamos a leer Genesis capítulo 4. I'm going to read it in English, and if you're reading in Spanish, please read the entire chapter. Yo lo voy a leer en inglés, y ustedes lo van a leer en, en español. The man had sexual relations with Hava, his wife. She re- conceived and gave birth to Cain, and he and said, I have acquired a man from Jehovah. In addition, she gave birth to his brother, Havel, Havel kept sheep, while Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil, and Havel too brought from the firstborn of his sheep, including their fat. Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering, but did not accept Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry, and his face fell. Jehovah said to Cain, why are you angry? Why so downcast? If you're doing good, shouldn't you hold your head high? And if you don't do what is good, sin is crouching at the door. It wants you, but you can rule over it. Cain had words with with Havel, his brother. Then one time, when they were in the field, Cain turned to Havel, his brother, and killed him. Jehovah said to Cain, Where is Havel, your brother? And, rep- and he replied, I don't know. Am I my brother's guardian? He said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood at your hand. When you fall on the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a fugitive wandering the earth. Cain said to Jehovah, My punishment is greater than I can bear. You're banning me today from the land and from your presence. I will be a fugitive wandering the earth. Whoever finds me 
will kill me. Jehovah answered him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain will receive vengeance sevenfold. And Jehovah put a sign on Cain, so no one who found him would kill him. So Cain left the presence of Jehovah and lived in the land of Nod, one land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain had sexual relations with his wife. She conceived and gave birth to Hanok. Cain, Cain built a, a city and named the city after his son Hanok. To Hanok was born Arad. Arad fathered Mechuyael. Mechuyael fathered Metushael. Metushael fathered Lamech. Lamech took, him, took himself two wives. The name of the one was Ada, while the name of the other was Zilla. Z- Zila, Zila, sorry. And Ada gave birth to Yaval. He was the ancestor of all those who live in tents and have cattle. His brother's name was Yuval, and he had ancestors of all who played the lyre and flute. Zila gave birth to Tuval Cain, who forged all kinds of tools from brass and iron. The sister of Tuval Cain was Naama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, listen to me, wives of Lamech, hear what I say. I killed a man for wounding me, a young man who injured me. Cain was avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Adam gave, again had sexual relations with his wife, and she gave birth to a son, and she named him Shet. For God had granted me another seed in place of Havel, since Cain killed him. Two... Sh- To Shet, too, was born a son whom he called Enosh. This is when the people began to call on the name of Jehovah. Amen? All right. So we're moving on to slide number eight. Okay, vamos a movernos a la parte ocho. And we're going to go on to section number two of the chapter breakdown. Y vamos a ir a la sección número dos para... um, um, The chapter is broken up into... A bunch of sections. El capítulo está compartido en diferentes secciones. Okay, and we're on section number two. Y estamos en la sección número dos. And this is going to be verse three through five. Y esto va a ser el versículo tres al cinco. And this section is called the first offerings to Jehovah. Y esto se va, y esta sección va a ser llamado las primeras uh, ofrendas a Jehová. Okay, now um, when you look at offerings. Cuando miras las, a las ofrendas, God decides what he's going to accept and what he's not going to accept. Dios decide qué él va a aceptar y qué él no va a aceptar. Okay, it's because the offerings are to Jehovah. Porque las ofrendas son hacia Jehová. So let's read verse 3 through 5. Vamos a leer el capítulo del, 3 al, del versículo del 3 al 5. So get your markers ready after we read it. Mantengan sus marcadores eh, dispuestos para gonna, cuando lo leamos. We're going to underline or highlight the major uh, parts of each sentence. Vamos a marcar las partes mayores de cada um, párrafo. Okay, verse, versículo 3, al uh, 5, verse 3 through 5. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of of the soil. And Havel too brought from the firstborn of his sheep, including their fat. Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering, but did not accept Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry and his face fell. Amen. So in verse um, 3, in el versículo tres, this is the first time you see an offering. Esta es la primera vez que vemos una ofrenda. So all the time that we lived in the Gan Eden, todo el tiempo que vivimos en el jardín del Edén, we never offered anything to the Lord. Nunca ofrendamos nada al Señor. But now that we're outside of the Gan Eden, pero ahora que estamos fuera del jardín del Edén, we now have offerings. Ahora tenemos ofrendas. Okay, now remember their father Adam Recuerden al padre Adam and their mother Hava y su madre Hava ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Comieron de la fruta del del árbol de de la del conocimiento. So they know that all of Torah is living inside of them. 
So, ellos saben de que la Torah vive dentro de ellos. So, they know that offerings, at least thank offerings, are, ne are needed. Ellos saben que aunque sean las ofrendas de gracias, son necesitadas. From, from the text right here, we don't know what type of offering it is at the moment. Por este momento, por lo que dice el versículo 3, no sabemos qué tipo de ofrendas son. Okay, so let's look at verse 3 and do our underlining. Vamos a ver el versículo 3 y vamos a subrayar. Or highlighting. I, like I said, I highly recommend getting a whole bunch of colors. Yo de, definitivamente eh, les, eh, les digo que busquen diferentes colores para marcar sus Biblias. And make a color system the way your brain works. <laughs> y hagan un patrón de colores depende como sus cerebros trabajen. Like um, offerings make them all purple. Como las ofrendas pueden subrayarlas morado. All, all sin offerings maybe make them all red highlighted. O si hablamos de of, eh, ofrenda de, de pecado eh, rojo. Because one day we may not have your Bible on your phone. Porque tal vez un día no tengamos nuestras Biblias en el teléfono. And you might actually have to have a paper Bible that you can read. Y vas a tener que tener una Biblia de papel. Or maybe... There's a hurricane and the power's out for how long has it been out in Puerto Rico? Long time. <laughs> eh, tal vez hay un huracán que y dure tanto tiempo como está pasando en Puerto Rico. Okay, so the best thing would be to have is a paper Bible. Lo mejor es tener una Biblia de papel. Okay, with lots of notes in your Bible. Con muchas notas en tus Biblias. Because the Torah is not a burden, it's life. Porque la, la Torah no es un cargo, es Vida. And the more you understand the word of God. But not just with your mind intellectually. No solamente con tu mente, intelectualmente, but with your spirit. Pero con tu espíritu, the, the closer you're going to be with God. Lo más cerca que vas a estar con Dios, or as we call him Jehovah that's the father. Y como nosotros le llamamos Jehová, que es el padre, the more you're going to be blessed. Lo más que vas a ser bendecido. Because he blesses people that know him and follow him. Porque él bendice a las personas que le siguen y le conocen. So let's read verse 3. Vamos a leer el verso 3. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. Okay? So we have four things to underline in verse 3. So tenemos cuatro eh, cosas para subrayar en el versículo 3. The part in the course of time eh, la parte en el curso del, del tiempo Cain brought is the second part Cain trajo es la segunda parte an offering ofrenda and produce of the soil y productos de la tierra so underline in the course of time eh, subraya en transcurso del tiempo Cain brought Cain trajo an offering una ofrenda produce of the soil producto de la tierra okay, so we got those four things to go over tenemos estas cuatro cosas now let's look at verse 4 vamos a ver el versículo 4 and Havel too brought from the first of the, his sheep including their fat Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering okay so here we got one, two, three, four, actually five. Aquí en el versículo cuatro tenemos cuatro cosas para subrayar. Oh. So the first part is Havel brought. La primera parte es eh, Abel trajo. Havel brought. Abel trajo. The next part, number two, is firstborn of his sheep. La segunda parte es el primer eh, nacido de la oveja. And you can even break that into two parts. Y eso también se puede partir en dos partes. So, put a, a slash. Puedes eh, hacer una, una línea entre medio de ellos dos. After the word firstborn. Después de la parte primer nacido. Okay. Then, including their fat. Incluyendo su grasa. Then Jehovah accepted Havel. Jehovah accepted Havel. And finally, his offering. 
Y por último, su ofrenda. So, going over verse 4 again. Vamos el cap el versículo cuatro otra vez. Once again, this is a teaching ministry. Una vez más, esto es un ministerio de enseñanza. And we go slow during our City Gate Messianic Bible study. Y durante el Messianic City Gate, um, vamos despacio. Now, if you're on YouTube, hit the like button right now. Pero si estás en YouTube, dale al, al botón de um, me gusta. And if you want to be interactive, y si quieres ser interactivo, send me an email and then you can be on our WebEx feed so you can actually ask questions. Mándame tu email y podríamos interactuar contigo a través de WebEx. Okay, so verse number four again. Versículo número cuatro, una vez más. Havel too brought, Abel underline también, that. Abel también trajo, subrayen esto. For, Abel, oh, no. Abel también trajo. Okay. Number two, firstborn. Número dos, primer nacido. Of the of his sheep. De la de un de, de la oveja. Number three, including their fat. Número tres, incluyendo la grasa. Number four. Número cuatro. Jehovah accepted Havel. Jehová aceptó Abel. And five, his offering. Y número cinco, su ofrenda. Okay, now we go to verse five. Vamos al versículo cinco. But did not accept Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry and his face fell. Okay, so there's three main ones. Aquí hay tres partes eh, primarias. And... Number one is going to be broken into two sections. Y la número uno va a ser compartida en dos partes. So the first part is did not accept Cain. La primera parte no aceptó a Cain. Part 1B. La parte 1B. And his offering. Y sus ofrendas. Number two. Número dos. Cain was very angry. Cain estaba bien... Um, Molesto. Cain was very angry. Cain estaba bien molesto. Then number three, face fell. Y número tres, um, face fell. Uh, got angry. Got mad. Se enojó bastante. Went from eh, mm. Se fue de un, de un poquito molesto a, a bien molesto. Okay. Now everybody got it? You need a moment. To, you want me to go over it again? You got, everybody got it? Okay. Now let's move on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima parte. Let's now read the three verses together, verse 3 through 5. Vamos a leer los tres versículos desde el 3 al 5. Need another pen? I think so, yeah. Mine just died. All right. First, versículo tres al uh, cinco. Uh, cuatro, cinco. Cinco. Versículo tres al cinco. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. And Havel, too, brought the firstborn of his sheep, including their fat. Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering, but did not accept Cain. And his offering, Cain, was very angry, and his face fell. Amen. So we're going to be focusing on verse 3. Nos vamos a estar enfocando en el versículo 3. Okay. Now, in verse 3, ahora en el versículo 3, you have the law of first reference. Tú tienes la ley de la primera referencia. For the word offering. Para la palabra ofrendar. So, uh, let's read verse 3 again. Vamos a leer versículo 3 una vez más. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. Okay? In, in, in verse 3, in el versículo 3, Cain is the oldest. Cain es el más viejo. And he is the one that is, brings the offering first. Y él es quien trae la primera ofrenda. Okay, the word offering, la palabra ofrenda, is the uh, word H4503. La palabra ofrenda es H, H4503. And it is the word minca. 
Y es la palabra minca. Que okay, es el root word minca. Es la palabra de raíz minca. It means a gift. Significa un regalo. Um, it uh, is a tribute. Un tributo. An offering. Una ofrenda. A present. Un regalo. Obligation. Obligación. Sacrifice. Sacrificio. Meat offering. Ofrenda de carne. Okay. Now, this did not happen immediately. Eh, eso no pasó inmediatamente. If we look at verse 3 again. Si vemos el versículo 3 una vez más. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. We have the phrase, in the course of time. Tenemos la, par, la, la frase en transcurso del tiempo. Okay, so that means the, the scripture doesn't tell us. Uh, significa que la palabra, las escrituras nos no dicen. How long between the garden. Ta, qué tanto tiempo desde el, el jardín. Their birth. Su nacimiento. And how old Cain is. We don't know how old Cain is. De, y hasta qué, qué edad tiene Cain. No sabemos qué edad tiene Cain. There is no scripture that I found that can tell me how old he was. No hay escritura que me han podido decir y no he encontrado yo que me digan qué edad tiene él. Now why this happened, why God has this, I have no idea. ¿Por qué Dios tiene esto aquí? No, no tengo la menor idea. You know, wouldn't it have been good to know the, the, he was 30? Eh, hubiese sido bueno saber eh, él tenía 30. Okay, but we do not know how old or how long this was. Pero no tenemos, no sabemos qué tal, qué tan viejo o qué tan largo fue esto. So, with the word offering, con la palabra ofrenda, it is undetermined why he's bringing the offering at this point. Es indeterminado por qué le está trayendo la ofrenda a este punto. Like, is it just, is it a thanks offering? Es una ofrenda de agradecimiento. Does he feel obligated to give the offering? Se sentiría él obligado a traer una ofrenda de gracia. Did he do something wrong? Hizo algo mal. Okay, we don't know why Cain, at this point, is bringing the offering. No sabemos por qué Cain, a este punto, está trayendo la ofrenda. Okay. Um, now, if we read verse 3 again. Ahora si vemos el versículo 3 una vez más. Okay. Is your battery okay over there? It's blinking already. It's blinking. Do you know how to change the batteries? Uh, no. All right. Let me... One second, everybody. There you go. Okay. Okay, so we're, we're talking about the offerings and my chair keeps sinking. Beep. Estamos hablando sobre las ofrendas. If you, if you, you think, think I'm getting shorter, yes, I am. The chair keeps going down. <laughs> <laughs> I get some real chairs here. Donations are good, but a real one would be good. Donations son buenas, pero una, las otras fueran mejor. I'm like, why is the desk higher? <laughs> All right, so with this offering, Con esta ofrenda, now let's look at the, 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 the word minca. Vamos a ver la palabra minca. Okay, one, it means a gift. Uno significa un regalo. Is, is Cain just wanting to thank the Lord, thank Jehovah? Is Cain simplemente quiere agradecer a Jehová? Or is he, you know, giving him a tribute where... He's thanking the Lord. O está dándole un tributo o un presente al Señor. Is he feeling obligated 
to give him, give Jehovah something. Se siente el obligado a darle a Jehová algo. So you see that minka can be a bunch of different words. So podemos ver que minka puede ser un, un, un sinfín de palabras, muchas so palabras. So we don't know why the, the, young, the man is doing it. We don't know if he's young. No sabemos por qué el hombre está haciendo esto y no sabemos si es joven. Because we know from Genesis, Bereshit 5, Genesis 5, porque conocemos de Génesis 5, 5, people get to live um, a lot older than we do today. Que las personas tendieron a vivir mucho más tiempo de lo que es hoy en día. So we don't know how old he is. So no sabemos qué tan viejo es sea él. Uh, let's read verse 3. Vamos a leer versículo 3 una vez más. In the course of time came an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. Amen. So here we see the first vegetable offering. Aquí vemos la primera ofrenda de vegetales. And we read later that the Lord does not accept vegetable offerings. Y después nos damos cuentas más adelante de que el Señor no acepta eh, ofrendas de vegetales. This proves that God is a man. <laughs> This proves God is a man. Porque es un producto It's a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are some weird men that like vegetables. Hay algunos hombres que le que le gusta el vegetal. Okay. Not this man. No, uh -huh. este. Okay. So we see, but what we are noticing. Aquí es, nos es, estamos viendo. Is that the first offering is a, ve a vegetable offering. Eh, que la primera ofrenda es una ofrenda de vegetales. Okay, and it is brought by the oldest son. Y que es traída por el hijo más viejo. Hey, you want to switch off? Let's switch translators. You ready there, Asher's mom? I'm ready. Thank right. you for coming. Now Jose can concentrate on, on learning. <laughs> Thank you, Jose. All right. So uh, let's read verse 3 again. Leamos el versículo 3 otra vez. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. Now, the soil is cursed, but it's good. La tierra fue maldecida, pero está en buenas condiciones. Because remember when the father, Jehovah, kicked them out of the garden, he cursed the soil. Porque recuerda que cuando el padre uh, expulsó a Adón del jardín, él uh, maldijo la tierra. And, uh, you know, plants generally produce a lot of fruit. Y las plantas generalmente producen mucha fruta. Okay. So, uh, you know, Cain is the type of person he is. Cain, que es la persona, el tipo de persona que es. Offers what he's working with. Ofrece lo que él, con lo que él trabaja. Okay, so he thinks he's doing right by the Lord. Y él piensa que él está haciendo bien en frente del Señor. Okay, but inside he also knows the full Torah. Pero dentro de él también conoce la Torah completa. Okay, so he gives this tribute offering. Entonces él entrega esta ofrenda en tributo. But we see the tribute offering is not accepted. Pero nos fijamos que la ofrenda no ha sido aceptada. Okay. Let me, let's move on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente página. Now let's uh, look at verse 4. Vamos al versículo 4. And Havel too brought from the firstborn of his sheep, including their fat. Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering. Amen. Amen. So now... We see the younger brother Ahora vemos que el hermano más, uh, el hermano menor brings the first animal offering. Trae el, la primera, uh, trae la ofrenda del primer animal. The first sacrifice offering that a human is going to do. El primer sacrificio de un animal que un humano va a oficiar. So we see from verse Three to verse four, what is accepted and what is not. Vemos en los versos tres y cuatro qué fue aceptado y qué no es aceptado. Or we see something, two different types of offerings. Vemos dos tipos diferentes de ofrendas. But 
we see one will be accepted in verse 5 and one will not. Y nos fijamos en el versículo 5 que una será aceptada y la otra no. We see also in verse 4. Y también nos fijamos en el versículo 4. So let's look at the, the, the first part of verse 4. Veamos, uh, leamos la primera parte del versículo 4. That who is bringing it? Habel. Que quien está trayendo la ofrenda es Habel. So we see two offerings from the same family. Vemos que hay dos ofrendas en parte de la misma persona, de la well, misma familia. One is accepted. Una es aceptada. And one is not accepted from the same family. Y la otra no es aceptada de la misma familia. So this also sets up a precedent. Entonces aquí también vemos que se sienta un precedente. Like let's say you have a family. Digamos que tienes familia. And some of it let's say, are non-Torah observant Christians who worship on Sunday, que adoran el domingo, celebrate man-made holy days of Christmas and Easter, celebran, uh, días, uh, uh, celebraciones hechas del hombre como Navidad y uh, uh, Cuaresma. So that's, let's say that's your brother. Digamos que es tu hermano. Now you get the truth given to you Y ve, y a ti se te ha dado la verdad. Uh, and you start following the, the road of Yeshua. Y tú comienzas a seguir la ruta de Yeshua. So you, you, um, you start keeping this, this, the Shabbat. Entonces comienzas a guardar el Shabbat. You keep biblically kosher. Te mantienes uh, bíblicamente kosher. And you start keeping God's perfect commandments. Y uh, comienzas a observar los mandamientos perfectos de Dios. That, so when you turn to Proverbs 28, verse 9, Entonces, cuando vamos a Proverbios 20, versículo 9, and what does it say in Proverbs 28, verse 9? ¿Qué dice en Proverbios 20, 20, 28. 28, versículo 9? That if a man does not follow Torah, que si un hombre no sigue la Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Incluso sus oraciones son una abominación. We, we see here, in the beginning, Vemos aquí en el principio, in verse 3 and 4, en los versículos tres y cuatro, we have two different offerings from the same family. Que tenemos dos ofrendas diferentes de la misma familia. One is accepted. Una es aceptada. One is not. Una no es. So you fast forward a couple of thousand years to where we are. Entonces, te, tú vienes a unos miles de años donde estamos. You have the Messianic Jewish believer, Torah observant Messianic Jewish believers. Tienes a judíos mesiánicos observantes de la Torah. Well, their, their offering is going to be accepted. Su ofrenda va a ser uh, aceptada. Because they're doing what God, Jehovah, said to do. Porque están haciendo lo que Jehovah les dijo que hagan. But the Christian who Pero, thinks they're offering is going to be accepted Pero el que que su va a ser is not going to be accepted. No va a ser now, we're supposedly part of the same family. Ahora, se que somos parte de la misma we both believe in you, well, they believe in Jesus. We believe in the, the Messiah, Yeshua. Ellos creen en Jesús, nosotros creemos en el Mesías, Hold on Yeshua. a second. Now, my battery's dead. Hold on. No, it's blinking. It's blinking. Sorry, one more second. We're having battery situation here tonight. One second, let me just go get more batteries. One second.
righty. Sorry about the technology glitches here today. Whatever. It's not a show. It's study. Just think if you're in college. All right. So what we're looking at here is something very interesting. Lo que estamos observando aquí es algo muy interesante. Is that the same family y es que la misma familia thinks they're offering each, e, e, the same family each is giving their offering. La, de, los miembros de la misma familia están ofreciendo cada uno una ofrenda. And only one is going to be accepted. Y solo una de esas ofrendas va a ser aceptada. Okay, because God only accepts what he wants. Porque Dios solo acepta lo que él quiere. So it's a very fascinating beginning understanding of offerings. Entonces es un, un, un entendimiento interesante de las ofrendas en, that, del comienzo. That the f two brothers que dos hermanos serving the same God sirviendo al mismo Dios knowing the same truths Conociendo las mismas verdades. One offering is going to be accepted. Una ofrenda va a ser aceptada. And one is not going to be accepted. Y una no será aceptada. What do you think about that? ¿Qué piensas de Let's go eso? around the room. What do you think about there, Mr. I'm on time blue shirt man? Did you ever look at it this way before? Well, the the question is how do how do we know that the children how how are the people going to know that God accepts the offering? Que la pregunta es cómo es que se sabrá si Dios ha aceptado la ofrenda. Um, well, it says it in verse 5. Lo dicen, dice esto en el verso 5. That he accepted Cain's offering. Que él aceptó la ofrenda de, de, de que no aceptó la ofrenda de Cain. So, we're going to get into how he offers it. Vamos a ver cómo es que él ofreció. Okay, so, if, um, verse 4. Pero en el versículo 4. Let's read verse 4. Leamos el versículo 4. And Havel too brought from the firstborn of his sheep, including their fat, Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering. So if he's offering up the fat along with it, si él está ofreciendo la, la grasa con, con su ofrenda, that means the animal is still alive. Significa que el animal está vivo. No, he's dead. Y está muerto. So he had to have built an altar of some sort. Entonces él tuvo haber, que haber uh, construido un altar o algo así. Now you can make an altar of earth. Puedes hacer un, uh, un altar de tierra. Okay, and you can make an altar of stone. O puedes hacer un altar de piedras. Or God can come down in fire and take your offering. O Dios puede bajar de, de, del cielo y quemar la ofrenda. But God saw the vegetables and went to Burger King. Pero Dios vio los vegetales y se fue a Burger King. You went to my place. Okay. But what we're looking at is that two brothers Pero lo que observando aquí es que los dos hermanos, with the same knowledge con el mismo conocimiento, remember all knowledge of good and evil que todo conocimiento de bien y mal, are inside both of these men están de estos dos hombres. from the same family de la misma familia. yes Oscar Not because he wanted to keep the offering to God, but he keep like, okay, I got to thanks, I got to thanks a lot for, for what I did. But the other one, he know that he has to give an offering, but he just, okay, it doesn't matter. That's why you have all an asset. 
So you think it's a hard issue? Tú piensas que la 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 porque no aceptó la ofrenda es del corazón. Okay, so you're saying it's a hard issue like people that want to celebrate the Shabbat. Tú piensas que es un problema del del corazón como la gente hay gente que some people quieren, some people punch the clock of Shabbat and they can't wait till it's over. Hay gente que 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 no puede esperar hasta que el Shabbat se termine. And some people really want to do the Shabbat. Y hay otras personas que quieren celebrar el Shabbat. So you you think that the, that's what's going on here? ¿Tú crees que eso es lo que está sucediendo aquí? As you say, we're not we're not going to see through the Bible and all the vegetable offering. This is the this is the only one. But this is the only one that. Uh, well, we do have Sukkot. We do have Sukkot. Tenemos la festividad de Sukkot. Where you do bring the fruit of the the the. the, the the, the, the fruit offering. Donde tú traerás tu ofrenda de comida o de frutos. Yeah. Okay. What? What? Now. Okay. Let's go to Jose. What do you think? Uh, All right, let's pause there. Jose says it's a heart issue. Jose dice que esta situación es algo del corazón. So, will the Christians' praise offering be accepted by Jehovah? Será que la ofrenda de de alabanza de los cristianos sería aceptada por Jehovah? Because they're doing it with all their heart. Porque lo están haciendo con todo su corazón. I, I know where I'm saying here, but I know where I'm going with that. Why I say, why I say the reason is because it's a hard issue, and probably I'm just gonna say Robert's right because. God. Oh, we're having a discussion. <laughs> and already, we, 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 Robert went through it. Proverbs 28, 9 says that uh, the prayer, if you don't follow, you not prayer is not gonna be accepted. Christians are not following. They think they're following, but even though if they do it from heart, the prayers are not going to be answered. No, it don't matter if they fast for 21 days and they get skinny and they have a spiritual diet. <laughs> so where I come is from this, why it's a heart is because sometimes like, let's say, offering on Shabbat, you know you have to give your 10%. Why you just, you'd be like skinny being like, no, you know what, I need this. I need, I need to keep this 20 dollars $20 in my pocket. So this was this is where You I were looking at this week's offering? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I was like, I wow. People, I know people that have done it. You know, and it's like why do you you don't want to give the full offering? Cain, I think he could have done the right offering if he wanted to do it so because he knew the right and wrong okay so Cain knows right and wrong Cain sabe lo que está bien y mal. but he uh, was a farmer Pero él era un agricultor. so he gives from his farm he could have done better yeah he could have his brother had sheep why not come to his brother and say, hey, listen, I gotta make an offering for my Lord. I buy you, I trade you my my veggies for one of your sheep. Yeah, somebody might actually like tomatoes or something. Oh, as we see, God don't want I don't like tomatoes. Now, Vidalia onions are good. <laughs> okay. What do you think, Miss Carmen? Two brothers. Dos hermanos. Same parents. Mismos padres. Both giving an offering. Los dos dieron una ofrenda. God accepts one but not the other. Dios acepta la ofrenda del uno pero no del otro. How does this look? In her opinion. In her opinion. <laughs> Eso tiene que ver nada con, con la, los frutas y vegetales. 
It doesn't have to do anything with the vegetables or the fruits. Something in the fruit and the salad. Fruit and salad. <laughs> And I don't think it has to do anything with, uh, with Abel's offering with the sheep. But I think that when Cain brought the offering for, uh, for Jehovah, como no le estaba queriendo, no quería traer. Like, yeah. Okay, so he did it by with uh, by obligation, like he had to do it. Yeah, he had to do it. Well, wait, let's pause there. He has to do it. Uh, no, it's not like he had to do it. It's like he wanted to bring it, but it's like the way he brought it to Jehovah's. It was it wasn't the right way. How do you know? Because to me, it's like if Jehovah don't accept the offering. Do you want to translate that? Paraphrase okay. it. Okay. Uh, Carmen dice que para ella no siente que fue ni siquiera, o sea, no tuvo que ver los frutos o, lo, o el animal que Abel ofreció, sino eh, a sí mismo es uh, eh, que no ofreció con fe, que no lo ofreció con, con el deseo de, de ofrecerlo. <coughs> de su corazón. Okay. Well, uh, he chose the best. He, cho he chose the best animal. He chose the best offering for the Lord. Okay. All right. Oscar. You think both bring the best? There's an actual good vegetable offering? On pizza? On pasta, yeah. But let's put it this way. We live in the same room. Okay. One is a foreigner, foreigner, and the other one. One's a foreigner? <laughs> yes. Okay, so you're thinking he brings the best vegetables to him? El hermano Oscar está diciendo que él piensa que los dos trajeron las sus ofrendas son eran eran buenas y que Caín como agricultor él trajo lo mejor de su de su de su tierra de su de su de su okay de su cosecha. So you you're thinking both both bring the best. ¿Tú crees que trajeron los dos lo mejor? Okay, this is Maritza. You want to add your two shekels or your two pesos in? <laughs> two cents. <laughs> well, I want to. I want to have the discussion. I want. I want to have the discussion. Quiero tener esta esta discusión. Because it's good to think about both offerings. Porque es bueno pensar acerca de las dos ofrendas. And what is accepted? Y que es aceptado. And what is not accepted? Y que no es aceptado. And then later on, when God says, "Why are you angry?" Y después cuando Dios dice, "Por qué tú estás enojado?" Go ahead. So Maritz is saying God already knew. Maritza dice que Dios ya sabía. Which he does. Lo que es cierto. But he could have gave him a chance. Then again, I don't know, I just feel like he he he, he 
he already knew that he was going to be envious of his brother, and he just. But but no. that's not in the text. So, the, it's a good hypothesis. Es una muy buena hipótesis que quizá tuvo envidia de su hermano. But it's not in the text yet. Pero no está en el texto. It's a lesson that the Lord is going to show us. Es una lección que el Señor nos va a mostrar. That you can be offering something that you think is good. Que tú puedes ofrecer una ofrenda que tú piensas que está bien. It's not to Jehovah's standards. Pero no es bajo las normas o estándares del Señor. And then Jehovah is going to show mercy. Y Jehovah va a mostrar misericordia. And he's going to say to you, this is what I want. Y te va a decir, esto es lo que quiero. <coughs> Martin, mute. Martin. I, I want to comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sanchez Land. So, Rabbi, because in, in Hebrew, I, I got the Hebrew here, and it says that uh, uh, it used the word ha'adama, which is the, 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 the dirt. But I was thinking at this point in, in chapter 4, the, the, the ground is being cursed already because it doesn't use the word ha'aretz. But it's, it says, mi pri ha'adama min ha'adonai. So... And that's the same word that he's using on chapter 3 when God cursed the ground. So I, I don't know. It made me think that, that Cain took, did a bad decision of offering God something that came out of a cursed ground. And then because in, in, in Hebrews 11, in Hebrews 11 says that but by faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain. When God approved of His gifts, so I, I don't know. It made me think that that um, Cain took the wrong decision on offering something to God that was cursed, and enabled, you know, offered out of His the best of His of His offering. I don't know if it is a matter of a heart obedience or bad decision or bad judgment. Okay, Thank so you. so let's go with your first part. Vamos a ver lo primero que el hermano Martín dijo. And the Martin was saying that uh, he's offering something from that uh, Cain is offering something from a cursed ground. Ah, uh, the eh, el hermano Martín dice que Cain ofreció algo de la tierra que estaba maldecida. Okay, but doesn't the animal eat grass from the cursed ground? Pero no come el animal eh, hierba de la tierra que está maldecida. Like the cow or the sheep? Como una vaca o una oveja. Okay. Now, so it is from a cursed ground that he's giving the Lord, but he, he's getting the best of his fruit. Can you repeat that in the first part? It is from a cursed ground that he's giving. Es de la, una tierra que está maldecida que le está ofreciendo. But let's just say he's giving, Cain is giving the best offering he has. Digamos que Cain está ofreciendo la mejor ofrenda que él tiene. Okay. But they both know the truth. Pero los dos saben la verdad. Now, let's read verse 3 through 5 again. Leamos los versos 3 al 5. I want you to think... We're, the object of the Bible study is to learn how to think. Quiero que pienses porque el objeto del estudio bíblico es que tú pienses. And then, um, like we started off tonight's study, we read the chapter again. Y como comenzamos esta noche leyendo el capítulo completo. So you have to read the whole chapter first. Tienes que leer el capítulo completo primero. Now we're going to look at what's inside the the house. Ahora vamos a, leer, a ver lo que está dentro de la casa. Okay. So in the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil, and Havel too brought from the first of his sheep, including their fat. Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering, but did not accept Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry, and his face fell. Amen. So the, the firstborn, we know, is very important to God. El primogénito, saben ustedes que es importante para Dios. Because it is Jehovah who makes the, 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 the pregnancy. 
Porque Jehová es el que permite el embarazo. Okay, because uh, the Lord is the one who puts the the birth in the in the the person the person or the animal. Eh, porque el Señor es el que pone el nacimiento o el bebé dentro de la persona o animal. Okay, so here. Um, well, let me just double check the word here. Akara. One second. I have. The firstborn is the Bekora. El, el primogenito es Bekora. Okay. Um, is H6, H1062. Es H1062. So he gives the, the firstborn. Es el primogenito. And Bekora, its root word is Bekor. Y uh, Bekora, la, la palabra, eh, la raíz es uh, Bekor. So here, Havel is giving the bakor to the Lord. A Havel se le dio el bakor del Señor. And then we, we, we see what is accepted. Y vemos lo que es aceptado. This is, like I said, this is a law of first reference. Como digo, esta es una ley de primera referencia. So later on, when, like we had this past Shabbat, right? De, después miramos así como tuvimos este Shabbat pasado. We had, we had the dedication of the firstborn male. Tuvimos la dedicación del primer varón. So the Lord is establishing something that will be accepted. El Señor está estableciendo algo que será aceptado. Okay. Because remember he took all the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn males of Egypt. De, porque recuerda que el Señor tomó la vida de los primogénitos en Egipto. But here, uh, Havel is bringing his Bekor to Jehovah. We vemos aquí que Havel está trayendo su record a Jehová. Okay, let's look at verse 3 through 5 again. Vamos a leer los versículos de 3 al 5. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. And Havel too brought from the firstborn of his sheep, including their fat. Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering and did not accept Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry, and his face fell. Okay? So, the first part we look at, once again, is in verse 3. La primera parte que observamos primero es el versículo 3. The, the offering is to Jehovah. La ofrenda es para Jehovah. So, Cain brought his offering to Jehovah. Havel brought the offering to Jehovah. Entonces, Cain trajo su ofrenda a Jehovah y Abel hizo lo mismo. Then, in verse 5, entonces, en el versículo 5, Cain gets angry that his offering's not accepted. Cain se enoja porque su ofrenda no fue aceptada. Making himself out to be a god. Haciéndose él un dios. Why are you going to get mad at God if your offering is not accepted by the king of the universe? ¿Por qué te vas a enojar con Dios si tu ofrenda no fue aceptada por el rey del universo? That's pretty... Uh, You think pretty high of yourself. This also begins to show a heart of Cain. También comienza a mostrar el corazón de Cain. And also a troubling thing that's going to begin. Y también algo problemático que está comenzando. Okay, now this also goes back to what we know Torah in our heart. Ahora esto regresa a lo que sabemos que la torre está en nuestro corazón. But what, what is the second commandment that the Lord gave from uh, Har Sinai, from Mount Sinai? ¿Cuál es el segundo mandamiento que el Señor dio en el en uh, Monte Sinai? I'm going to put your sins on your children. Voy a poner tu pecado en tus hijos. So what was the sin of Cain's father? ¿Cuál fue el pecado del padre de Cain? What was the sin of his father? El pecado fue desobediencia. What, Maritza? Yeah. Disobedience. Disobedience to the word. Disobedience to the word. Okay, now the word lives inside of us. Ahora, la palabra vive dentro de nosotros. Because all knowledge of good and evil went in, they bit from that tree. Pero porque el conocimiento de bien y mal vino del árbol. So, if you can't offer what God wants, Entonces, si no puedes ofrecer lo que el Señor quiere, then ask God how to achieve what he wants. Entonces, pregúntale a Dios cómo tú puedes adquirir lo que él quiere. Oscar, then Maritza. Uh, how do we know the best? 
because produce of the soil. Porque dice, could be wheat. He doesn't say vegetables. It says the fruit. Tiller of the ground. Fruit of the ground. What would come from the ground? Que viene de la tierra. As we see in the beginning, God, God said to them that every planted tree that produces in the roots. It says fruit in Hebrew. It says peri, pe, resh, yud. In Hebreo dice fruta peri. It says fruit is the de de definition number one. Eh, fruto es la definición número uno. So he's bringing fruit or vegetables. Él está trayendo frutas o vegetales. He's not bringing wheat. No está trayendo trigo. That would be a different word. Esa sería otra palabra. So one uh, A is fruit or produce of the ground. Uno uh, A es fruta o producto de la tierra. The Hebrew word, is, the Hebrew root word is peri. La palabra hebrea es peri. And broccoli is demonic. Uh, I, I don't believe in the Hebrew there's a separate word for fruit. I mean, let me just see if I can find vegetables. Let me see if there is a different word. This is a good question. That's not what I pregunta. One second, everybody. One second, I just want to see if we can find if there is a different word. Because that would, you know. Just look it up to see if we have it. Estamos mirando una palabra en el hebreo. Vegetables doesn't appear in the CJB. La palabra vegetales no aparece en la CJB. Let me see if vegetable, like singular. Vamos a buscar la palabra vegetal. It doesn't appear. Tampoco aparece. Let me see if, let me just try a different translation. Vamos a buscar en otra traducción. And we can cross reference to see if it, let's try King Jimmy. Nope, doesn't appear in King Jimmy. Vegetables. Tampoco hay en vegetales en la en la en el rey Santiago, en la versión rey Santiago. It doesn't say I'm spelling. Nope, the word vegetables doesn't appear. La palabra vegetales no aparece. It's just a single word of fruit from the ground. Es una palabra singular que es fruto de la tierra. 
Anybody else find it? Are you Josh, control? are you there? Or is he working? I'm here, Rabbi. I don't know if you listen to me. Do you, uh, do you see the word vegetables at all? Only fruit is the one to show. Then I, 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 I gotta keep searching though. Yeah, I don't, I don't find it, but uh, you, you did that for a few minutes, okay? What so, about in Exodus? Is in there? No, right? When, uh, when I, they, I, when I they, looked. Uh, I typed uh, different, and I looked in three different translations just, just um, to see if... I'm saying then the reference when um, the, uh, Hebrews, the Hebrews uh, are complaining, saying that they were sitting on pot, uh, around the pot with meat eating... Um, Vegetables and that, or or it was um, yeah, leeks I thought... and cucumbers, stuff like that. Pot, meat. Let's see if it's there. Okay. We're looking just to just to clarify because it's a good it's a good discussion and like I said it's it's Bible study. Estamos buscando clarificar porque es un un ser una buena discusión. Okay, I've got meat a bunch of times. Let me. Sit. I'm just trying to look up the reference that Reverend and Veronica made. That was a good reference. Estamos, estoy tratando de buscar la referencia que Reverend and Veronica eh, trajo. No. Let me see if I can find the word cucumber. Cucumber. Doesn't look right. Oh, it's spelled right. All right, so um, to my, the best of my knowledge at the moment, Para lo mejor de mi conocimiento, the word fruit is for fruits and vegetables. La palabra fruta es para fruta y vegetales a la vez. Because in the Hebrew, let me close this part of the window. Porque en el Hebreo, uh, it's produce of the ground, fruit es, or produce. Es producto de la tierra. So um, the produce of the ground could be a cantaloupe. El producto de la tierra puede ser un melón. But still, God didn't accept it, although cantaloupe is excellent. Eh, pero igual el Señor no lo aceptó. So now, the, the reason for the discussion La razón por la discusión is when that well, one it is Jehovah who's accepting the offering. Eh, primeramente es que Jehová es el que está aceptando la, la ofrenda. And if God doesn't tell, if He says to you, "I don't accept that offering," es, eh, si te dice, Yo no acepto esa ofrenda, what do you do with the information? ¿Qué haces tú con esa información? Okay, that's the the biggest issue. Ese es la el problema más grande is what when god says to you you're angry cuando dios dice tú estás enojado that i didn't accept your offering y no hace, y no acepté tu ofrenda but what do you do with now with that new knowledge ahora qué haces tú con esa nueva información so we like you know the the christians are praying over their pigs los los cristianos oran por por su puerco and they think god is accepting their prayer over the, the pig meal. Y ellos piensan que el Señor está aceptando su oración por la oración sobre su chancho, cochino, puerco. But, but we don't, we, we see in Leviticus 11, don't yeah. eat the pig, don't touch the pig. En el Leviticus 11 que no toques el, el marrano, no toques el puerco. 
because uh, it says don't touch their carcasses so you're not going to touch the dead carcass to eat it. Te, no vas a tocar el, 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 la, el, la carcasa de, de, del animal muerto. Okay. And then in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, en el libro de Isaías, outside of heaven are those that eat the pig. Y fuera del, de los cielos de Hashemaim están los que comen puerco. So, what do you do with the information? ¿Qué haces tú con la información? Do you get angry at God? ¿Te enojas con el Señor? So, let's look at verse 3 through 5 again. Vamos a ver versículo 3 al 5 nuevamente. And, and if you find the word vegetable, Josh, just chime in and let me know so we can look it up ourselves. All right. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the produce of the soil. Habel too brought from, from the firstborn of a sheep, including their fat. Jehovah accepted Havel and his offering, but did not accept Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry, and his face fell. Okay? Now, the, the, the first part here is this. La primera parte aquí es esta. Who are we offering to? ¿A quién le estamos ofrendando? The brothers were offering to Jehovah. Los hermanos le estaban ofrendando a Jehová. Who is the one that accepted or denied the offering? ¿Quién es que acepta o eh, dice que no a la ofrenda? Was Jehová. Era Jehová. So why get angry at your brother? ¿Por qué enojarte, enojarte con tu hermano? Because Cain gets angry. Porque Cain se enoja, se enoja. And we've already read the chapter, so he kills his brother. Porque ya leímos el, el capítulo, él mata a su hermano. Why get angry at your brother when it was Jehovah, the, the one who accepted or denied the offering. ¿Por qué enojarte con tu hermano si quien denegó o aceptó la ofrenda fue Jehová? Is he thinking that um, that because his brother offered at the same time, his was not accepted? Tal vez pienso el que porque ofrendaron a la misma vez su ofrenda no fue aceptada. All right, let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima página. Okay. Jehovah accepted Havel's offering. Jehovah aceptó la ofrenda de Havel. The word accepted in verse 4. La palabra aceptada en el versículo 4. Is Sha'a. Es Sha'a. It is H8159. Es H8159. And the, the root word Sha'a means. Y la palabra raíz Sha'a significa. It means to look at. Para mirar a. Or to regard, o para reguardar, gaze at, gaze like, o como para, para delumbrarse. You know, you, you look at a beautiful sunset, you're gazing at it. Estás, estás delumbrado mirando un atardecer hermoso. So here Jehovah is looking at that offering. Aquí está Jehová mirando a esa ofrenda. And that first sacrifice from a human y el primer sacrificio de un ser humano because we see in verse 4 porque vemos en el versículo 4 that the animal is dead que el animal está muerto because you can't offer the fat unless the animal's dead porque no puedes ofrendar la, la grasa si no eh, la manteca si no el animal no está muerto okay so this is the first animal sacrifice by a human este es el primer sacrificio de un animal por un humano Because we're no longer in the garden. Porque ya no estamos en el jardín. Okay, we talked about the sacrifice in the garden that Jehovah did. Eh, ya hablamos del sacrificio que hizo, eh, se hizo Jehová en el jardín del Edén. So now we see the first sacrifice by a human. Y aquí vemos el primer sacrificio de un humano. Of the firstborn of the sheep. Del primer nacido de la oveja. That is accepted by Jehovah. Que es aceptada por Jehová. He gazed at that one and said, I'm going to take that. Él miró eh, muy bien, mucho tiempo eh, y dijo, voy a querer esta. He didn't gaze at the fruit or vegetable offering. No se admiró, no se detuvo a mirar por mucho tiempo a la, de, a la ofrenda de vegetal. So, here, he's like saying, mmm. Aquí, él dijo, mmm. Okay, that's what sha'a means, to look at. Eso es lo que significa sha'a, para mirar. To desire. Para desear. To say that is good. Para decir eso es bueno. All right, let's go to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima página. Now verse 5 again. Versículo 5 una vez más. But did not accept Cain in his offering. Cain was very angry and his face fell. Okay, so he did 
not accept Cain's offering. Él no aceptó la ofrenda de Cain. Now, let's look at the word angry. Vamos a ver la palabra enojado. This is going to tell you a lot about the one brother. Eso te va a decir mucho de un, del, del hermano. Because he doesn't just get angry. Porque él no solamente se enoja. That's why I wanted to discuss it before we got to the word. Por eso primeramente quería discutirlo antes de llegar a la palabra. Okay, Cain became very angry. Cain se molestó bastante. The word angry is H2734. La palabra enojado es H2734. Okay, it is the Hebrew root word hara. Es la palabra en hebreo hara. 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 It's a <laughs> like <Es> Ahmed. <laughs> Yes. So he became a Puerto Rican later on? <laughs> Anger. Yeah, he led his emotion. We're going to see. Let's read the definition of the word. Vamos a leer la definición de la palabra. Okay, because we see this throughout history. Porque vemos esto a través de la historia. And you see that with, you know, the brothers, Reuben and Shimon, let their anger get the better of them. Vemos la, los hermanos que se molestan, Reuben y Simón. Okay, so hara means to be hot. Eh, la palabra hara significa eh, estar gente. encendido, enfurecido. Yeah, I guess so. Caliente. Furious. Furioso. Burn. Quemado. Uh, become angry. Ponerse eh, enojado. Be kindled. Ser como encendido, enfurecido, en enojo. Be incensed. Be estar ser encendido. Everything come out okay. I gotta go. Okay. So we see Cain does not just get a little perturbed. Vemos que Cain se enojó un poquito. He becomes furious. Él se enfureció. He becomes furious with God and his brother. Él se enfureció con Dios y con su hermano. Why get furious with your brother? ¿Por qué enfurecerte con tu hermano? Okay, why get furious with God when God doesn't want what you're giving? ¿Por qué enfurecerte con Dios cuando no le das lo que desea? And this is a lesson that is, should, people should learn. Y esta es una lección que la gente debería aprender. So many people walk away from God. Mucha gente se aleja de Dios. When they don't get what they want. Cuando no obtienen lo que quieren. Let me say that again. Déjame repito otra vez. You know, a lot of people walk away from God. Mucha gente se aleja de Dios. Like my father walked away from God. Como mi padre que dejó a Dios. When his father died when he was a teenager. Cuando su padre falleció cuando él era un adolescente. So many people do that. Mucha gente hace eso. Okay, there was a guy that used to train us in the martial arts that used to come here. Hay un hombre que solía entrenarnos para artes marciales que se congregaba aquí. And he would only come into the congregation until his wife got healed. Y Remember solía, Julio? Y él solía venir a la congregación hasta cuando su esposa se curó. Were you here when Julio was here? Yeah. No, you were friends with his wife. Julio? Yeah. La Salle. Right. Julio? And he walked away when his wife would not, when the Lord would not heal his wife. Okay. So here, people have not changed in 7,000 years. They, they get angry at God when God doesn't do what they want. Our job is to do what Jehovah 
wants. Nuestro trabajo es hacer lo que Jehová quiere. There's a lot of people that lost their faith in the Holocaust. Hay mucha gente que perdió su fe durante el holocausto. Because God allowed the people to be murdered. Porque Dios per permitió que la gente sea asesinada. Well, the question is, why were you there in the first place? La pregunta es, ¿por qué estabas allí en primer lugar? If you were God's chosen people, si eres la gente escogida de Dios, why did God allow this evil to take over your lives? ¿Por qué Dios permitió que este mal, esta maldad tome sobre tus vidas? So here, Cain was very angry. Cain estaba muy enojado. So he was jara. Él estaba jara. He was furious estaba, with God and his brother. Estaba enfurecido con Dios y su hermano. And once you lose your emotions, y una vez que tú te pierdes en tus emociones, you lose the battle. Tú pierdes la batalla. Satan is just standing there going, yeah, get angry. Satanás está ahí parado esperando que tú te enojes. There's a time for emotions. Hay tiempo para emocionarse. And there's a time to yield to the Lord. Y hay momentos donde tienes que ceder para el Señor. Let's go on to ver, let's go on the next slide. Vamos a ver el siguiente la siguiente página. Let's see what the Father in heaven tries to do. Vamos a ver qué es lo que el Padre en el cielo quiere hacer. Let me see. One second here. Okay, wait. Let's let me see Daniel 112. One second, Daniel. Oh yeah, Daniel eat vegetables. Let's see what the word is. Not really. Two two three five. H two two three five. Zoroa. It's not real. Zoro. Zoroa. Zoroa. It's a root word for vegetables. Well, Zoroa. It's arm. In Daniel one twelve, it says. They ate vegetables. Hmm. I'm going to have to look that one up there, Martin. Because <laughs> the row has arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zion. Yeah, yeah, but in the Torah, I'm sorry, Rabbi, in the Torah says in plural, Hatzeroyim. It's saying in plural. But the, the root word is the one that you say. Yeah. That's, it's, yeah. Yeah, zoroim would be plural, but the root is zoroa, which means arm, and it doesn't mean vegetables. Which is interesting. That's a study for another time. <laughs> All right. All right. So, any questions on that? Let's let's see what the what the father does next. Maritza. Mm hmm. My chair keeps sinking. Sorry. Yo creo que el padre le va a advertir, dice la hermana Maritza. Thought I lost weight, but the chair is telling me you haven't. <laughs> All right. Got to get some new chairs. All right. Verse, now we're into section three. Ahora vamos a la sección tres. And this is verse six and seven. Y este es el son los versos seis y siete. This is Jehovah warns Cain that sin desires him. Este es el momento en que Jehovah... Advierte a Caín que el, el pecado lo desea. Ok. Let's read verse 6 and 7. Leamos los versículos 6 y 7. Jehovah said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why so downcast? If you're doing what is good, shouldn't you hold your head high? And if you don't, don't do what is good, Sin is crouching at the door. It wants you, but you can rule over it. Amen? Amen. All right, so now let's, let's break our sentences down again. Vamos a dividir estas oraciones otra vez. Let's look at verse 6. Vamos al versículo 6. There are 
three, uh, four sections to verse six. Hay cuatro secciones en el versículo seis. The first part is Jehovah said to. La primera parte es Jehovah le dijo. So if you're underlining your Bible, underline that part. Jehovah said. Si están señalando sus Biblias, señalen la parte donde dice Jehovah o el Señor dijo acá le dijo. The second part is why are you angry? La segunda parte es por qué estás enojado. The third part is why so downcast. Y la tercera parte es por qué se ha por qué ha cambiado tu semblante o por qué se ha demudado tu semblante. Okay, in the verse 7. Versículo 7. We have one, two, three, four, five, six sections to verse 7. Hay seis secciones en el versículo 7. The fir first part is doing what is good. La primera parte es hacer lo que está bien. Doing what is good. Hacer lo que está bien. Hold your head high. Um, Number two, hold your head high. Número dos, mantener tu, cabe tu cabeza alzada o sería... No serás aceptado o... It's not hold your head high in Spanish. Okay, let me go back to. Shouldn't you hold? It? Let me see what it will yeah, say. Yeah, it's, it's if you're not if if your offering wouldn't be as if he wouldn't be accepted. Ah, uh, this verse seven. Let me see what it says in. Reina Valera. Esa es esa Reina Valera. ¿Qué dice ahí? Your countenance. Is there a countenance there? Be lifted. Aceptado. Okay. Your head high or your countenance be lifted. No serías aceptado. Third part. You don't do what is good. Y enaltecido. O en la, en la Reina Valera dice no serás enaltecido. Y si no hicieras bien, si no haces el bien. Then... Fourth part, sin is crouching at your door. La cuarta, la cuarta sección es el pecado ya sea la puerta o el pecado está a la puerta. Sin is crouching at your door. El pecado está a la puerta. Fifth part, it wants you. La, la quinta parte es te codicia. It wants you. Y te codicia. And then finally, the sixth part, you can rule over it. Y la última parte, la sexta, es puede, pero tú debes dominarlo. You can rule over it. Tú lo puedes dominar. So the, fa the father is showing some great caring here. El padre le está mostrando que le importa mucho aquí. He always warns us before we do something wrong. Él siempre nos advierte cuando estamos a punto de hacer algo malo. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Y él es el mismo ayer, hoy, siempre. You have a question? Okay, so back to verse 6. Vamos de vuelta al versículo 6. Jehovah said to Cain, why are you so angry? Why, are, why so downcast? Okay, so the first part we look at. La primera parte que observamos. If we go on to the next slide. Si vamos a la siguiente página. Jehovah, or these are rhetorical questions. Estas son unas preguntas retóricas. But he's trying to warn his creation. Cuando le está tratando de advertir a su creación. Okay, so Jehovah speaks to Cain. Jehovah habla a Cain. Because he says to him. Porque le dice a él. But Jehovah already knows the reason. Pero Jehovah ya sabe la razón. So he says, why are you, why are you, hara, hara, why are you angry? Le dice, ¿por qué estás enojado? Why are you so downcast? ¿Y por qué tu semblante ha cambiado? So he knows what you're thinking. Porque él sabe lo que estás pensando. And he's the same always. Y él es el mismo siempre. So if you think you're any different, the si, Lord is always knowing what you're thinking. Si tú crees que eres algo diferente, el Señor sabe siempre lo que estás pensando. He's trying to get your attention that he knows what is going on in your head. Okay, so he's, he says two things to him. He 
He says, why are you angry? Él le dice, ¿Por qué estás enojado? And why are you sad? ¿Y por qué estás triste? Okay, so he knows what he's thinking. Él sabe lo que él está pensando. So if he's the same God today, y si él es el mismo Dios el día de hoy, then he knows what we're thinking too. Entonces él sabe lo que estamos pensando también. And then he gives him a warning. Y también le da una advertencia. But he always does two things. Pero siempre hace dos cosas. Let's look at verse 7. Veamos al versículo 7. If you are doing what is good, shouldn't you hold your head high? If you don't do what is good, sin is crouching at the, at the door. It wants you. You can rule over it. So here... God didn't accept, Jehovah didn't accept his offering. Aquí Jehovah no aceptó su ofrenda. So he's saying, I'm the one that didn't accept your offering. Y le dice, yo soy el que no acepté tu ofrenda. Be, you know, why are you mad at me? ¿Por qué te has enojado conmigo? Why are you angry at me? ¿Por qué estás enojado conmigo? Why are you sad that I didn't do it? ¿Por qué estás triste que yo no lo acepté? Then he says to him, if you do what's good, y le dice después, si haces bien, then you can hold your head up high. Entonces tú podrás mantener tu cabeza en alto. So at verse 7, en el versículo 7, you know, the offering, he knew the offering was wrong. Sabemos que él sabía que la ofrenda estaba mal. Because he's telling him, you know what is good. Porque le dice, tú sabes lo que está bien. You know what you should be doing. Tú sabes lo que debería estar haciendo. You know what you should be offering. Tú sabes cómo es la ofrenda. Okay. So with this, how, how, would, how would Cain know what is good? ¿Cómo Cain sabe lo que está bien? How would he know what is good? ¿Cómo él sabe que está bien? How did Abel know that he was doing good? And he took the sheep. Same. How would the brother... How would Havel know and how would Cain know? How? Torah is in our heart. How did no one knew that the, the, which ones were clean and unclean animals? What? How did no one knew what, which ones were clean and unclean animals? Uh huh. How did he know how to get seven clean animals? Seven sets of clean. Okay. So here Jehovah says to Cain. Aquí Jehová le dice a Caín, If you are doing what is good, si estás haciendo lo que está bien, so the father knows that Cain knows what is good. Entonces el padre sabe que Caín sabe lo que, está, lo que es bueno. So this proves Esto prueba that we know what is good and what is not good. Que nosotros sabemos que es bueno y que no es Because how, you know, here's a conversation that is written down for us. Aquí hay una conversación que está escrito por, para nosotros. Now picture yourself, you know, put your, put your camera lens on. Ahora pónganse sus lentes de cámara. You know, Jehovah's talking to his kid there. E imagínense que él está hablando con, Jehovah está hablando con su hijo. Well, nobody can talk to God and live. Nadie puede hablar con Dios y vivir. No, no. He's not seeing the glory of God. They're talking. No está viendo la gloria de Dios, sino que están hablando. Okay. Because you always get the thing from the Christians. Porque siempre tienen las cosas de los cristianos. You know, nobody can see the glory of God and live. You're right. Nadie puede ver la gloria de Dios y vivir. Okay. You can talk to God, but you can't see the glory. Tú puedes hablar con Dios, pero no ver la gloria. Okay. So let's read verse 6 and 7 again. Leamos los versos 6 y 7. Jehovah said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why so downcast? If you're doing what is good, shouldn't you hold your head high? If you don't do what is good, sin is crouching at your door. It wants you, but you can rule over it. How would he know what sin is? Como él sabía que era pecado. How would he know what is good? Como sabía que le, lo que es bueno. How, now Jehovah's talking to his creation. Ahora Jehovah está hablando con su creación. Is he going to hold him accountable unless he knows? Le va, le va a ser responsable si él no sabe. What do you think there, Maritza? Mm -hmm. 
He's going to hold him accountable if he knows what's right. So how would he know what sin, if God says sin is crouching at your door, how would he know that? How would Cain know what is sin? Remember, they're living under grace. So, what his father went through? So, what, well, we're not in the garden anymore. We can't eat from that tree. How would Cain know what sin is? He has a program. No, I want, I want, I want you to know, to think about this. Because this is a great argument for the For the Christians who don't think that we need to follow the law anymore. Porque esta es un buen, uh, una buena discusión para con un cristiano que dice que ya no vamos a seguir la ley. If, if God is fair, if Jehovah is fair and just. Si Jehovah es justo y, y, uh, y justo, fair and just, justo. <laughs> How is Cain going to know what is good? Como Cain va a saber que es bueno. And what is sin? Y lo que es pecado. He has to know the Torah. Él tiene que haber sabido la Torah. But the Torah is not written yet. Pero la Torah no está escrita aún. Mr. Oscar? You don't think it's a 613? No crees que había no 613 aún? Right. Okay, so you want to paraphrase that? Uh, que uh, el hermano Oscar no piensa que aún existían los 603 en ese momento que porque en el jardín solo existió un, un mandamiento y después con el tiempo el Señor fue adhiriendo más mandamientos ¿verdad? ok so then let me ask you a question déjame preguntarte algo <laughs> How did Havel know to give the firstborn of the sheep? ¿Cómo es que Abel sabía que tenía que dar el primer uh, el primogénito de sus animales? And the fat. Y la grasa. If 613 was not written. Si los 613 no estaban escritos. Oh wait. Now, they do the Shabbat. Well, the Shabbat was given in Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 2, verse 3. El Shabbat se les entregó en Genesis, capítulo 2, versículo 3. Before, the, before we even got kicked out of the garden. Antes de haberse desposado el jardín. Because Jehovah rested on the seventh day from all his work that he did. Porque Jehovah descansó en el séptimo día. Well, it's an offering, correct? But it's an offering. It's a minko offering, which has a very broad meaning. Es una ofrenda que, que tiene un gran significado extenso. But why offer the first the firstborn sheep? ¿Por qué ofrecer el primogénito de sus animales? And the fat. Y la grasa. Which you know the fat really tastes good. 
que la grasa sabe muy bien. Nothing better than you know, crispy, crispy chicken, you know, fat skin and mmm, crispy. Nada mejor que la piel del pollo bien frita y crocante. <laughs> how how would he know to give the fat? Cómo él sabía que tenía que también dar el, el, la grasa. Right. It's an ola. It's a burnt offering. Es una ofrenda quemada. How? Wh- Why would he give him a whole burnt offering? Le damos una Where do we find that? ¿Dónde encontramos eso? Huh? Oh, that would be the 613. All knowledge of good and evil. Todo conocimiento de bien y mal. When he bit that Whatever fruit it was. Cuando él uh, mordió cualquier tipo de fruto que haya sido. I'm thinking a pomegranate. Yo pienso que es una granadilla. Some people might think a peach. Otros piensan que es una pera. Or an orange. O una naranja. The Hebrew doesn't tell us. El hebreo no nos dice. When he bit whatever fruit that was. Cuando él mordió cualquier fruta que haya sido. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. El árbol del conocimiento del bien y el mal. So now. Cain, his son. Ahora Cain. Jehovah's talking to his son. Jehovah está hablando con su hijo. The son who was not born in the garden. El hijo que no nació en el jardín. He was born in Aruba. El nació en Aruba. It's supposed to be a paradise. With no rain. It's a desert. No lluvia. Desierto. Okay. So... He's born outside of paradise. El nació afuera del jardín. Jehovah says to him. Jehovah le dice a él. If you're doing good. Si estás haciendo bien. Hold your head up high. Mantén tu cabeza en alto. But if you're sinning. Pero si estás pecando. If you're doing, if you, you're not doing good. No estás haciendo bien. Then sin is crouching at your door. Entonces el pecado está a la puerta. How would Cain know Cain? what is sin? Sabía que era pecado. He's going to murder his brother. No, but how would he know murder is a sin? He's going to him but the Lord is saying. But how, if Jehovah's talking to him, si está con él. he's warning him that you're, you're thinking about something Estás de algo y lo estás and it's sinful. Y es it's, he's warning him. Le está how would Cain know what is sin unless Torah lives inside of us. Como Cain sabía que era pecado a no ser que la Torah viva dentro de nosotros. All knowledge. Not partial. Todo conocimiento, no algo parcial. Not Acts 15, these five things. No Hechos 15, estas uh, cinco cosas. All knowledge. Todo conocimiento. He's not saying Just this little bit. Because he's going to murder his brother. He's going to lie about it. Then he's going to cry about it. When Jehovah kicks him out of his presence. How would he know? So that this is a great conversation to have with the Christians. Es una buena conversación. Well, he's not going to say in Leviticus 11, chap, chapter 11, verse 4, it says, don't do this. No va a decir, la, eh, no va a citar el capítulo y el versículo de donde está que dice esto. But if Jehovah says, do it good, 
Pero si Jehová le dice hacer bien. Hold your head up high. Mantén la cabeza en alto. Do what's bad. Haz lo que es malo. The devil's going to get you. El demonio va a atraparte. So Jehová knows that Cain knows what is good and bad. Jehová sabe que Caín sabe lo que es bien y mal. He's not going to hold him accountable. No lo va a mantener este uh, responsable. You're responsible for knowledge he doesn't know. Por el conocimiento que no tiene. That wouldn't be right. That would be Islam. Eso no sería correcto. Eso se llamaría Islam. So our God, the, the great God, Nuestro Dios, el gran Dios, will only hold you accountable for knowledge that you know. Solamente te va a mantener responsable por el conocimiento que tú sabes. And that would be what is good. Y eso sería lo que es bueno. And what is bad. Y lo que es malo. That would be 613. Eso sería los 613. And this proves that he knows what is good and bad. Y prueba aquí que él sabía lo que era bueno y lo que era malo. Because Jehovah Maritza was right. Jehovah knows what's going to happen. Porque Maritza estaba en lo correcto y Jehovah sabía lo que va a pasar. So... If he's warning him about murdering his brother, si él está advirtiendo acerca de que de, de que va a matar a su hermano, but the commandment verbally has not been given. Pero el mandamiento verbalmente no ha sido dado. Because we got another thousand years or so before we get to Moses. Porque tenemos otros miles de años, un mil mil años más o algo así para you know, llegar a Moisés. We got to have the twelve tribes born and. 430 years in slavery. Tenemos que tener a las a las tribus que nazcan y los 430 años de esclavitud. When Jehovah speaks, cuando Jehová habla, you shall not murder from Har Sinai. No debes a matar de ese Sinai. Lev, what's what's a me? No, that's uh, no, that's uh, Lev. What is what is thou shall not murder in Hebrew? What's the commandment? Oh, Lev. Okay. No, I just want thou shalt not murder. Honor your mother and father. I don't have time. You let me down, Lev. <laughs> Mr. Coolman. No, just Good discussion. I just want to add because <clears throat> I, I talked to my colleague because we're just working too and in a section of doing pipes and all this stuff. And well, what is it? Low Tisa. Low Tisa? Okay, Low Tisa. Very good. So, um, talking to him one, in, a, in a moment, he's like, what do you think, man? We get, we get into discussion about Catholic. He says that he has been in Christian. He knows a little bit about it. But I know he doesn't know much about nothing. Because the things that comes out of his mouth. He must be a Democrat. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> but then he goes like, I know, he told me with his own words, like, I know what's good and bad. I know when I'm doing right. I know when I'm doing wrong. And I said, but why didn't you choose to do bad? He didn't give me an answer on that. So this brings it back to here. That no matter if you read this word or not, you know exactly what's wrong and right. So yeah. this came from a human next to me that I talked to him every day. Amen. Your car, yeah. So Jose was saying that he's talking to a, uh, a secularist. Ah, el hermano José está, estaba comentando que él habla, estaba hablando con un secular. And he knows. The guy knows when he's doing right and when he's doing wrong. But he hasn't read the Bible. Pero no ha leído la Biblia. And this goes back to the book of Romans. Y esto va de vuelta al libro de Romanos. The Gentiles are following Torah even though they have not had the Torah. Los gentiles que están siguiendo la Torah, aunque ellos no han tenido la Torah. So it goes back. This is a perfect way to witness to a Christian who thinks they're getting into heaven. Esta es una buena manera de, de hablar con un cristiano que piensa que va a ir al cielo. You know what day is the Sabbath. Tú sabes qué día es el sábado. You know that homosexuality is wrong. Tú sabes que el homosexualismo está mal. You know that eating pig is wrong. 
Tú sabes que comer cerdo está mal. So here, how would God hold Cain responsible? Porque como Dios este, le, le mantuvo a Cain responsable. Unless he knew what is right and wrong. A no ser que él sabía lo que estaba bien y lo que estaba mal. Because next week we'll get into him murdering his brother. Porque la próxima semana vamos a ver cuando él mate a su hermano. How could God, sorry my foot stuck. <coughs> Trying to hold the chair up. I'm sinking again. <laughs> Watching the camera go. Okay. The camera's not moving. The chair is. I'm pretty soon I'm going to be on the floor. Okay. See? Now I'm higher. <laughs> okay. So how would God, how would Jehovah kick Cain out of his presence? ¿Cómo Jehovah este, expulsó a Cain de su presencia? For murdering his brother unless Cain knew that it was wrong. A no ser que Caín sabía que eso estaba mal. And if he knows that is wrong, y si él sabe lo que estaba mal, then he knows the other 612 rules. Entonces él sabe las otras 613 reglas. This is why we're an education ministry. Por esta razón es que somos un ministerio educativo. Now, let me ask you a question. Ahora déjame preguntarte algo. Is Cain a Jew or a Gentile? Es Caín un judío o gentil? It's a Gentile. Es un gentil. Because the Jews are not a people yet. The Hebrew is not a person Porque yet. Los hebreos no son un pueblo aún. So that's another thing to say to the Gentiles. Es otra cosa que debemos decir a los gentiles. Cain and, uh, Cain and Havel were, were, by definition, Gentiles. Cain y Abel fueron por definición gentiles. Because Hebrews were not made until Abraham. Porque los hebreos no vinieron a existencia sino hasta Abraham. So that means, means the Gentiles are responsible for the commandments. Significa que los gentiles son responsables de los mandamientos. There's no two covenants. No hay dos pactos. Because we are children Porque of somos Adam and Chava. Hijos de Adón y Chava. We just got switched when there was a separation with Abraham. Solamente fuimos cambiados cuando hubo una separación con, uh, cuando Abraham. And es. that's when God changed Abraham's DNA. Sorry, ah, Dr. Mark. Ahí es donde Abraham cambió el de ADN de Abraham. Because we're similar. Porque somos similares. But there is a separation in the DNA of the Hebrew. Pero hay una separación en el, en el ADN del hebreo. But everybody is responsible for the commandments. Pero todos son responsables por los mandamientos. All right. We're on slide number. We're on section. We got through one more section. Only oh, take us 20 weeks to finish. Is this a good, is this a good study? Do you want to go to Proverbs or something? Or do you want to keep doing this study? Let's keep doing this study. Okay. All right. Let me take questions. You got a question on Skype? Hay preguntas en Skype? Because it's 9.30. Okay, any questions on Skype? Put your hand up or unmute. Preguntas en Skype, le quiten el, el uh, aprendan el micrófono o levanten la mano. Okay, any questions on WebEx land? Eleven, you okay there? All right, any other questions in the room? Preguntas aquí en habitación. Oscar? I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look up all the vegetables. Just make sure you know if it's vegetables or, or because, you know, when God said, okay, fruits, fruits. Well, the, the word was peri, which meant fruit or vegetable. La palabra peri significa fruta o vegetal. But I'm going to look and see if there's another Hebrew word besides zoroa, <laughs> zoroa for vegetables. Pero voy a ver si hay otra palabra este, que sea uh, para vegetales a más de sobo. And if there's like a correlation between that and wheat. Y si hay alguna relación con el trigo. Yeah, well, fruit, fruit, it said fruit and vegetable. Yeah. All right. So, but I'll, I'll look it up for next week. It's like the one that's, I try to think of every angle. I didn't think of that angle. 
All right, any other questions? All right, let's pray to close. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this really good discussion. Thank you, Lord, for giving us all knowledge. May we please you in how we follow you. In your name, Yeshua. Amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. That Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend a day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our King's Word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. 
If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.